role play is defined by choices. Impersonation is the core part of role play and will often transcribe the choices directly. When it comes to impersonation, there are three main cases. You may be impersonating the main character as interpreted. You may be playing yourself. Or you may be trying the all the option because you want to 100 person the game. You can try multiple kinds of dialogue options. Silly ones, shocking phrases. But you may also want to add some mundane lines for the sake of diversity. Role play is defined by trying. And trying should be opening more possibilities for options, even if the options themselves are limited. Anticipation is transcribed by predictability. You want to have a certain degree of predictability to produce involvement, which in return will generate memorability. You want to implement a diversity of quests, some serious ones, some not so serious ones. Diversity will help you to provide a narrative structure, and a narrative structure allows you to, de to deliver predictability in your anticipation. You may even want to have some bad quests, well, especially if that makes them more memorable. The main quest may have an impact on all the other quests, but it is not a necessity. Players need a common reference point in order to predict the next event, to predict a crisis, and if you allow it, to prevent this crisis. Choices are meant to be significant, as they are limited. Player needs to make choices, which seem to matter. Namely, you need to be able to see these choices' consequences. But how can you tell if your choices are significant? There are four criteria. These choices will affect your reputation. They should be directly acknowledged by the person you helped or its relatives should allow you to develop new relationships and or it should allow you to solicit these relationships. These four criteria are not necessarily cumulative. How do you define your options? Branched options are best and if you can create a complex maze of options it's even better. How do you define essential criteria to create options? You want to propose not more than three options to your players. And there's, there's a purpose. But there's an easy way to introduce clarity in branched options. Colors. Use a color code for your options. And then, by giving them three options maximum, the color code and limited choices help the player to decide efficiently, and it hints to the outcome a due choice is supposed to lead to. You can go for good, neutral, bad, or order, neutral, and chaos alignment system in order to provide your three options and the color code corresponding. If you design a universal alignment system, give player a frame of reference. But there are others, other kinds of options when it comes to color. You can try to design efficient options, which is the most objective approach, or fun options, which is the most subjective approach. You can also propose balanced or reasonable options, dramatic or exaggerated options, compassionate options, and or hateful options. Here, Compassionate and hateful are different from good and bad, since they are specific to the character and not to the situation. 